I think this is a spice bush swallowtail. I planted these zinnias to kind of help attract some pollinators to our squash over here. Even though I don't think butterflies pollinate squash too much, they're very pretty. So this garden, um, we had almost a month of semi-drought. It was actually showing up on drought monitor. Um, but the last few days, we've gotten something like close to three inches of rain, maybe a little over. So it's really going bananas. And I have this giant zucchini over here, which I'm actually intentionally leaving, um, hoping for some seeds, because I'm very interested in saving seeds, learning to save seeds um, from a variety of different plants. But these are the zucchini, and of course, when you have zucchini, you start getting squash bugs pretty quick. I don't spray, so there are some... I have seen some that are dead that are have been eaten by natural predators, but probably not enough. So I'm just trying to grab some, feed them to my chickens when I can find them. If I find a leaf that's got a whole bunch of baby ones on it, take it back and give it to the chickens, and the chickens love it. And I tried just letting the chickens in here, um, but unfortunately they decided that the squash was tastier than the squash bugs, um, so they killed a couple of my seminal pumpkins up here. I think one of them, not the plants, just the uh, fruits. But one of them might still be okay. You can kind of see it's been growing, but it got really pecked on, and this one got completely pecked up. So I'm still getting zucchinis, even though um, definitely have some squash bugs. I basically, I have to keep up with um, coming out, picking them, giving, the ch giving them to the chickens, and pulling off eggs and that kind of thing. So you get this. Mmm, squash bugs. Yeah, not good. So I'll have to come back for those guys. So this right here, these flowers, this is Cucurba de Moschata. Um, over here, zucchinis and pumpkins and a lot of other summer squash are Cucurba de uh, Pipo which is a, um, both of these are North American species, but um, the zucchini, the cucurbita pipo, is unfortunately, at least the cultivated ones, are very susceptible to squash borers, squash vine bor uh, squash bugs, cucumber beetles, and pretty much every bug you can think of. So they can be a little bit difficult to grow unless you're going to micromanage them. These guys, the cucurbita moschata, don't seem to be as productive um, but they're not a lot more resistant to those particular insects. Like, I don't really see squash bugs on these guys too much. Um, but I haven't gotten very many actual fruits. So, plus they take up a lot of space. So I may have to move them elsewhere uh, next year. Then over here we've got, this is an old world species. This is the edible gourd. So this is Lagneria cerisea pretty sure it's the specific epithet and it produces um, an edible gourd and so far I haven't really gotten good pollination on them or at least that's what it appears to be so they haven't really been developing very well now they're fuzzy so you actually to eat them you actually have to pick them young and then uh, basically peel them um, but they're pretty tasty they have a very different flavor uh, than a lot of other squashes so I kind of like them my three sisters' experimental bed is doing a little better. Um, the rain has helped them some, and I think the you notice that the um, our bean is actually now circling the uh, the corn, which is actually what it's supposed to do. The corn's just a little, a little on the light side, which is probably my fault for not getting enough fertilizer to them but hopefully the bean will help eventually. I did inoculate it with um, some rhizobia, so it should eventually start providing some nitrogen. So we'll see how it does. Like I said, this may take a little bit more time for me to master.
Right here is the bed where our potatoes were. And I don't have the potatoes anymore because I dug them all up and harvested them. Um, the cabbage is basically just a mess and I'm just sort of hoping that they'll bolt and produce some seeds at this point. Um, <clears throat> but in some of the spots where I had the, um, had the potatoes, I put in some zucchinis and, um, well, I did put in some, some, uh, potatoes, but they didn't really go anywhere. Um, over here I have the Chinese long bean that's a purple, um, but they, I think they've been kind of affected by the little mini drought that we had and they hadn't been doing so well. What has been doing really well though is over here, these are my purple potted, well actually they're not purple potted, they're pink eye, pink eye beans. So this is a Vigna species. This is an old world um, bean, not Fezziola, it's not the green beans that you might be used to. This is a southern bean. So these are um, much more heat tolerant. Uh, you could eat them as green beans, but usually they're eaten either more as a dry bean or as a shelling bean. So they're doing really well. I've got lots of production here, and they're very, very happy with me. I also um, inoculated these. In fact, the inoculum was the same um, for the Vigna and the Vaseolus. It was a little mix that we got. So moving on in this bed, and I'm probably going to plant some more stuff. I'm not entirely sure what yet. We've been kind of tossing out a lot of our... Um, chicken leavings to work into the soil. Um, right here, this is a, this is the Buena Mulata pepper and it's really doing well. Um, the one over there is also doing really well. And at first I thought these peppers weren't going to be hot, but they are. And it's a really beautiful plant. Um, these got a really late start because I I thought I was going to be able to buy peppers from the store and I wasn't able to because of the pandemic. Um, and then right here, I've got some sweet potato. This is a sweet potato called fork leaf. So I've got some of that. This is my one surviving um, peanut plant. So it's experimental. And then I've got some more of the fork leaf over here and they're doing pretty well. So I'm, I'm fairly impressed with them. Right here, I kind of have my new jungle. This is, this was formerly the spring bed so I kind of came in and ripped everything out. Um, I harvested everything out of this bed. So these are um, dragon tongue beans. These are supposed to be bush beans. And so far they are not producing a whole lot. They're not even producing flowers right now. Uh, my kale has survived. It had a really bad infestation of caterpillars. So I was actually pulling the leaves off and giving them to the chickens and letting the chickens pick off all the caterpillars. Um, there are also sweet potato vines in here. Um, this is the Kalana Sunrise. That one got a little bit stunted, um, but they're still vining out. I didn't probably space them as well as I should have, but this one is just, he's going, he's le it's leaving. Bye. So it's doing pretty well. Right here in the middle, I've got one of these prairie grasses that I still need to kill. Uh, but out here, this is where all the beets were. So I had lots and lots of beets, uh, radishes, and a couple of other things. And I pulled all those out, uh, made some tasty stuff with them, and they're doing well. Um, I planted some pumpkins here for the kids, just for entertainment purposes. And then I've got some, this is some purple sweet potato over here, um, which hopefully will do okay. All right, so these are our bean towers, and they're doing fairly well. This one, this is the um, Hopi, Hopi yellow, and it just, it won't even flower for me. So I don't know what its deal is. It does not like me. The uh, purple potted are producing some. Um, it's just been really hot. And so they're not really producing very well right now. They're producing a little bit. But that's kind of it. Got a few in here. Nice thing about the purple ones is they're easier to find. So I've gotten some good harvests off of these. But just lately, they haven't been doing so great. Probably because of the heat. 
Um, over here, these are the two purple potted, kind of overplanted plus heat equals not so happy. Um, but right here, I've got, uh, this is Seychelles beans, and they've been doing pretty well. And even in the heat, they're still not nearly as productive as they would be ah, ordinarily. Some of them have some bean beetles or bean bugs, but I've definitely got at least a few to harvest. So bean towers are doing okay, not super great, but again, a lot of that's due to the weather. It's not necessarily even the plants. So they're doing, yep, we've definitely got some beans up there. So they're still producing. You can see right here, got these beans, but then there are basically spaces where there were flowers, but there are no beans. So they flower, um, but there aren't any beans. Basically the beans don't set when the temperatures at night are too hot. So it's one of the problems with pole beans. So you can kind of, it's kind of true of bush beans as well. And all the Phaseolus genus pretty much have this problem, at least Phaseolus vulgaris, which is the normal um, species of bean. There's another species called tepary bean, um, which is supposed to be a little bit more uh, heat tolerant. And I did actually plant one kind of as an experiment in another part of the garden, but it hasn't even started flowering. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, but these guys are at least producing some um, before it gets super hot. All right, so let's look at our tomato bed. So this is some crazy tomato going on. And these are the Cercovix. Not all of them have this crazy bottom like this, but some of them do. Some of them are just perfectly beautiful, like this one. Oh, it's almost perfectly beautiful. But yeah, some really nice sized tomatoes off of these. And we have just been getting just inundated with tomatoes to the point where it's just like, what do we do with all of our tomatoes? We actually have a random volunteer tomato that just showed up. I did not plant this one. Um, these are more bush beans. And I actually forgot about a couple of pods in here, which I was letting go to seed. There's one that's still pickable. But we've also got over here, there's another tomato. And really, I probably should have pruned these because they're just a little excessive. And some of the tomatoes are ending up like this. But the chickens like them, so I'll give them to the chickens. But over here I planted some more uh, green beans. So I've got the blue lake, and then I've got the dragon's tongue. And so far the dragon's tongue has not done anything for us. Um, but, but the blue lake is still producing a little bit, not a whole lot. Uh, this, Especially this bed was really affected by a lot of the temperature and the drought. But this right here, look at this tomato. This is just, we're getting some serious tomatoes. This is the um, F2 of Beefmaster that we tried. And so it seems to be doing pretty well. I think the Cernkovic's a little bit more productive. And I kind of prefer those tomatoes. But this guy, when it produces a tomato, it is not kidding around. So these are some really good sized tomatoes. Let's get a lot of these that just get... This is why people put them on trellises, which is probably what we should have done. But I also started them, they were, I started them from seed too early, put them out. They were too big. So they filled up the tomato cages really, really fast. So they just, they're just a little overgrown, but they're still producing um, plenty of nice tomatoes. So I'm not really hurting for tomatoes in any way just got boatloads of them and of course there's still plenty of green ones left what's really bananas are these these are my Matt's wild cherry and they're just literally just kind of exploding out of 
out of the bed. This got knocked over by all the wind. They're just coming out of the tomato cages, exploding like mad. Then over here, I've got the, um, this is the okra. Ooh, I think we have, <gasps> we do. We have the very first okra right there. That's my very first okra of this year. And they got a little behind because I put down this uh, weed barrier. Oh, there's another one. There's another little okra. This is Stuart Z-Best. Um, I have tried Clemson Spineless, but I really don't like Clemson Spineless that much because it gets, it gets hard pretty fast. And I don't really notice a difference between the quote-unquote spineless versus the not spineless. So the Stuart Z-Best can grow a really long time before it actually goes um, hard and woody. But yeah, I basically had to poke holes in the bottom of my little weed fabric here to um, make it able to grow into the soil below. Because otherwise this little bit of soil is not enough. And this one broke through really fast. And the other ones... Um, have not so it's a little it's a little problematic but hopefully that'll be better next year because um, basically I'll already have those holes ready and the weeds underneath should be pretty much gone but the, yeah this is my Watts wild cherry and it is just if you like cherry tomatoes you just you can't even a look at the Cirkovic Yugoslav plants they are just Amazing. Now the Matt's Wild Cherries kind of come into the middle of them. But you can see there's two right there. There's a little cluster. There's another one down there. There's another nice one just hanging right here. Here's another cluster of giants. Look at that. Look at these things. These are just huge. And there's another, there's another bunch back there. Um, they're a pink tomato, which I kind of didn't think I liked. Um, but I tasted them, and they're really tasty. They're kind of in here a little bit too tight. Oh, this one got a little bit beat up. Um, still usable. Some of these are cracking partly because we had so much dryness, and then we just had suddenly had a bunch of rain. So it's been a little hard on the tomatoes, but a lot of them still look pretty good. So highly recommend Cernkovic Yugoslav. I really like... Uh, the flavor and it's something you really have to get seeds for okay so right here we have the bell peppers and they're not doing super great this is corona this is my corona pepper it's a bell pepper and it's supposed to turn yellow looks like this one's getting yellow a little bit but it's got a little brown stuff on there it's turning a little yellow that's good um, this one over here, I've kind of got some prairie plants coming up, and it just, I don't know, it just started wilting, and I don't know what its deal was. So here's two more Cirkovic Yugoslavs, which are, these are small ones, which are really awesome tomatoes. Um, the other one over here, this is another pepper. This is a pepper called Puma, and this is a super hot pepper. This is a um, habanero type pepper, which I usually don't get peppers that are that hot. You can see that's, that's the biggest one, but it's got a, quite a few on there. And this one, this particular plant is the best of them, but I just kind of stuck them in places so they didn't really have enough space. And that's because I started my peppers um, a little bit too late. So I think I've learned my lesson on that next year. Start the peppers before you start the tomatoes. Peppers take a long time. Sweet potato here, this is Dingus Bayesian Purple. So it's supposed to be a um, purple sweet potato. So that's a purple sweet potato. So we'll see if it produces very well. All of these are purple sweet potatoes. And for some reason, this one took off, and the rest of these just did not. I'm not really sure why. One liked me, and the other one didn't. Who knows? So here's the watermelon. Trellis lanatus. That's a male flower, it looks like, I think. There's nothing behind it, but look at what's behind it. There's a female flower right there. We can tell. There's the ovary right there. 
that over is what will become the watermelon. Now over here, we had one leaning down, so maybe it got pollinated. Hopefully got some interested ants. And over here, got kind of another vine from the same plant. I think they do self-pollinate, so hopefully that little guy turns into a watermelon. All right, so it is, it's only, it's July 20, 21st. It's really baking out here. Um, it's just really, really humid because we've had so much rain. Um, but I went ahead and threw down some more beet seeds. Basically kind of an, I hate to do it in the same spot as I had the other beets, but it's kind of a good spot. So it's right next to um, my Dingus Bayesian purple over here. And so I'm hoping that um, what I've read and, and watched and different people trying things is that they, they do their beets um, actually kind of in summer and then they actually mature into the fall. So I'm going to go ahead and try that because I really, really like beets a lot. And they're surprisingly somewhat difficult to get at the store, um, at least fresh. So beet greens are really tasty. Regular beets are tasty. So even if I just get greens out of them, they'll still be good. All right, so this is kind of the harvest I just got just now. Um, and I really have not even picked everything that I could pick. And there are certainly plenty more cherry tomatoes, but they're actually starting to fall out of the sides of my basket. As I've said before, I need a bigger basket <laughs> to do this properly. Okay, so I haven't showed you guys this garden bed in a while. Um, this is kind of right next to the house, so I'm kind of able to micromanage it a lot more. So this has got... Um, this is basil, and then I had one of my onions just started growing, so I thought I'd throw it in a pot, see if I can get it to produce flowers. Um, this is my really experimental plant. This is a moonbean. This is another species of Vigna. I think this is, oh, I can't remember the specific ep epithet, um, but this supposedly grows much better in hot climates. Now, I say that, and... It still hasn't produced any flowers for me yet, but it is really huge. It's basically the biggest plant in this bed. So it's really, really freaking huge. Um, I've got some more zinnias over here. They've been well liked by some bumblebees. Then over here, I've got a Thai basil going on. And then I finally got my... Uh, <laughs> My marigold, my tiny marigold I grew from seed, is finally starting to produce flowers, at least. Now, behind here, I've got some flax, some fiber flax I threw in here because I was worried about the larger bed that I did um, kind of farther away from the house. So there's another moon bean over there, and then there's a really big um, Hopi red, uh, red dye, amaranth, over there. So that's doing pretty well, and I've got some native plants back there. I've got some purple milkweed seedlings, which are coming up, kind of just, I didn't intentionally plant, plant them there. Oh, there's a lizard. There's a little lizard guy. I think he looks like he's a fence lizard. How cute. Yeah, we have lots of lizards and, um, and toads, mostly, a few frogs. Um, that's a Rudbeckia back there. Um, so I'm kind of trying to turn this upper part into a native plant bed eventually, so I don't have to crawl up there and weed too much. But yeah, this is Hopi red dye, and the leaves taste pretty much exactly like spinach. It's a really tasty green. I really, really like it. Um, I'm definitely going to grow more of it. I may actually grow it in the main garden bed, because unlike spinach, uh, it doesn't just massively go to bolt the minute it gets hot. It actually likes hot weather, which we have a lot of here in Missouri. So right here, I've got some dill. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to learn how to do some dill canning. And then I mentioned earlier, I had a tepary bean. This is a tepary bean right here. So this little guy, um, it's actually several seeds together. I grew in a pot kind of for my class like last year. So it's been going for quite a while. Um, and it may have a little bit of uh, spider mites, but... From that time but it is starting to grow up it just has not started to flower and i also stuffed in an extra tomato over here 
and then I put in some, this is fennel, and this is another one of these puma peppers, and it's not doing quite as well because the tomato insists on flopping all over it. But anyway, this is my little kind of herb slash experimental garden bed, um, which I like quite a bit. And I've been able, it was really, really weedy before, and I've just gotten rid of the weeds by just cultivating, cultivating. And because it's so close to the house, uh, it's not really difficult to work on.